I want to start big picture. Um, tell me about the advertising that this office does on local radio, billboards, newspapers, magazines. We are the business office of Erie County. Uh, I am in charge of four departments. Uh, the Auto Bureau, we are an agent of the state. Uh, actions and proceedings, which we, we talked about. Uh, in addition to that, the pistol permit office, our registrar's office, and then of course our business office, our DBA office. We have to follow rules and regulations from New York State which change constantly, and the federal government. For example, uh, we've been advocating for the Real ID uh, May 3rd of this year, uh, 20, uh, last year, 2022, was the deadline to get your Real ID or enhanced driver's license. You would not be able to fly domestically without that license. It is a very complicated process. Uh, we, have, we don't want people to come in uh, without the proper documentation. We want to communicate to the public. If you remember the old DMV in the old days, you would go there and wait for hours. This past weekend, we opened and extended hours at the Eastern Hills Mall. We added eight hours. We had to communicate that to people to let them know so they can come in for that convenience. We've extended hours in the morning. The average transaction, because we communicate with people on Saturday, was less than four minutes, 186 customers. And you say to yourself, why is that important? Because New York State has been advocating for people to go online to renew their registration, to do their transactions, and why is that important to Erie County? Because as of today, we receive 12.75% of all transactions. The importance of that is that we were the surplus of Erie County during COVID-19. Now, I mentioned actions and proceedings. Uh, something everyone knows, I served in the New York State Assembly. Uh, I was the champion of the Zombie Property Initiative, the Foreclosure Relief Act. We are now facing a housing crisis in Erie County. No one is talking about it. But one of the indicators that we're working with our not-for-profits is that pre-foreclosure notices. They have been steadily climbing because there has been a moratorium because of COVID-19. So we've gone from 2,500 people in Erie County to 5,000 to 7,500. There's almost 10,000 people in Erie County that are 90 days or more behind on their mortgage. Well, why do we have to communicate with them? Based on my experience, people don't like to come to outreaches that talk about their financials. If I asked you probing questions today about your financials, you may or may not want to talk about it, right? Your neighbors may not want to talk about it. So we have confidential private uh, hotlines working with the West New York Law Center, 828-8429. People call knowing that they can confidentially talk to people. This is an issue that impacts many different people, especially in our poor areas like uh, the east side. They don't have access to the internet. So we try to utilize as many uh, ways to uh, communicate with people as possible. So you have Renew Local, keeping money in Erie County, and you have people facing foreclosures, and of course, our veterans. Putting our DD-214s on records, I'm the keeper of the records, and you say, why is that important? The reason why that is important is I get so many phone calls from either widows or family members saying, hey, my dad died, uh, my, my son died, uh, we wanna get some, uh, this is the funeral home, or this is the family, they conveyed to me that I need a copy of the DD-214. If they put it on record here in the clerk's office through our Thank of that program, it's good. So these are all things uh, that we do to communicate. Just one of a number of, of different things that we do uh, for advertising, whether it's going, uh, like you said, billboards, dealing with the real ID, whether it's uh, talking to people about foreclosure. You gotta remember, uh, we haven't had an auction in two years, and Erie County is facing uh, a major and major foreclosure crisis because they don't foreclose on all properties. So there are people that are facing big problems. So all of our messaging, everything that we do, is for the benefit of the customer, and it's in communication. Because as I said, I don't make the rules, we follow the laws with New York State as agents and the federal government. So we have great partnerships with the passport agencies, Hundreds of questions a day about passports because people couldn't travel. 
So you can see, Michael, there's lots of reasons why we have yeah. to communicate. I could go on and on yeah. and on. You just defended the advertising, but the law is crystal clear that you can't appear by likeness, picture, or voice in any of those ads. Right. Why did you use your voice and put your picture in so sure. many of them? So here, I want you to understand that there's a process in Erie County. So let's talk about the process, right? So every year I have to submit a budget. I go across the street and I meet with the budget director. We sat down with the budget director and said, hey, look it, these are the things that are happening. We need to advertise more. What do you think about it? He conveyed to us that this is a good time to do it. We have a very good budget. Uh, we asked for approximately $100,000. I said, is that a fair number? We want your opinion. And the reason why we do that, Michael, is for checks and balances. Now, it goes to the county executive. The county executive sees the budget, goes back to the budget office, and then gets filed with the Erie County Legislature. Now I go up to the Erie County Legislature, and they ask those questions. They ask very good questions. Why do you want this money? What are you using it for? In an open forum with people there, we say, we want to advertise. These are the reasons why we want to advertise. Okay. But the advertising Wait, isn't but the let me problem. Finish, but let me, the but problem let me, is that you put your, your face in them, no, no, in no, your no. voice. But let, me, but let me finish. So now, just finish, there's a process. Right? So now we go to the legislature. Now it goes back to the county executive. Remember, this is Mark Polencars' budget office. Mark Polencars' budget office decides this. Not me. I'm just, I'm just the clerk. I'm not in charge over there. So now it goes back to Mark uh, Polencars, and he can veto it, change it, or accept it. He accepts it. Now we have our budget. Now I still don't have control over the process. Now we have to go work with purchasing. We discuss this with purchasing. Do you know who's in charge of purchasing? Erie County Executive Mark Polencars once again. So now we go to purchasing, and purchasing works with us and says, this is what you can and cannot do. After all of that, we finally come to that point where we say, we want to do this, and they recommend to us. We probably uh, can't do PSAs, but we can do advertisement. You can do radio advertisement. Going through that whole process, all through that process, there are supposed to be checks and balances. If at any time, someone would have said, Michael, stop, don't do it, we wouldn't have done it. No one said stop. There was no one, I'm not an expert, I'm not an attorney. It's not my job to be an attorney. My job, we just talked about it, is to be the clerk. That's what the checks and balances are there for. The legislature, the controller, the county executive, the budget office, those are all people who are there to supposed to check on that. If at any point in time someone would have said that there's a possibility that it was wrong or it's something we shouldn't do, we wouldn't have done it. So they approve the money, the spending, but you make the ads. Did they know that you were using your picture and your voice? Well, here's what they do know. When I spoke with the controller, uh, one, it costs, you're in the business, it costs money to use someone else's voice. So on the radio, you can't see me, obviously. And I think the only person who knows my voice uh, besides my significant other and probably my family is my priest. So when I go to confession, he knows my voice. But the law says you can't do it. I know, but let me finish. So here's the thing. If people knew about that, I had a personal conversation. He was my teacher. I've known him for over 30 years with the controller. He knew that these ads were going on, but he decided not to say anything. He waited until after the election, and he went on the record to say that. Matter of fact, he voted for my budget when he was a legislature. He voted for it. It's his job. It's his oversight to look at this and to know. Now, if he heard that during the campaign and said, county clerk, stop. I think there's a problem. He didn't say anything. So let me ask you He about was that. silent. But let so me finish. The, the comptroller's he was radio office put out a memo right. um, January 5th of this year. Right. saying they would no longer pay for advertisements that were in violation of this specific part of the law. Correct. I have copies of invoices that you continue to do these radio shows we're with not, taxpayer money after you got that memo. We, were, we, have been, we have not done anything 
going forward. Those are late invoices from the previous year. So you haven't done any in the month of January or February? Nothing. Okay. We, Michael, we have immediately stopped. And this is the irony of talking to the controller. So after I talked to the controller, we, you said it earlier, I don't run from things. We said this, I did this man-to-man, -man, face to face And I said, why didn't you call me? Why didn't you let me know? I don't know that this was a law. But it's, it's ironic that the budget office didn't know. The county executive but didn't know. But they just approved the spending. They didn't know what your ads looked like, right? No, we have to work with purchasing and tell them, we are doing this. this so, is what so when you submitted your budget, you showed them what, what you wanted the ads to look like and they signed off on them? No, what they said was, look at why are you doing, what are the topics that you're doing? And we told them. But topics are fine. The problem is that you put your face and used your voice. The voice. How can you blame the budget office? That, those were your decisions, no? No, those, those are decisions, those are joint decisions. Because if we would have known that, the, the controller heard the ad prior when? to the election. Prior to the election. And, you know, and how do you know that? He told me. Okay. Then go ask him. And I have proof because there were people there. So he heard the ad prior to the election. And he conveyed to me that he didn't want to interfere in the election. Well, here's the problem. I'm always the clerk, whether I'm running for election or not. He's always the controller. He should have stepped in and said, stop until we get an illegal opinion on this. We didn't even talk about the law department. If the controller had any type of uh, concern at that point in time, if I was controller, if I was county executive, I would say, stop, let's get an opinion on this. There's been no legal opinion on this from the law department. All we have heard from the controller's office is he's not going to pay after a certain date. Now, he's paid all of those previous ones, and he will pay those because he will be sued. Erie County will be sued because those, um, uh, those entities entered into the contracts with Erie County in good faith. Is I don't it possible they didn't know either? Who's that? Is it possible that the Comptroller's Office didn't know that this was illegal? I don't know. You'd have to ask him that. But here's the thing. He knew prior to the election and did nothing. What did he say to you when you had your conversation? He didn't say, Mickey, you shouldn't be doing this? No, he said, I have concerns about this. I had, this is not during the election. After the election, he said, I have concerns about this. Because the ads, we ran, the ads went from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. This wasn't like something that we did in a, a short period of time. So, but the ads did ramp up the closer to the election, primary and general election. Because the why reason why, because we have to spend the money of prior to that budget year, December 31st. We have a beginning and an end to the budget year. We don't make the decisions on this. The purchasing office has to tell us when we can do this. But you went to them and said, I'd like to spend this money this year. I mean, when we look at the previous years and the amount of advertising, it's $3,000 in 19, 3000 in 20, 14000 you know, you know in 21, why? and then over 100000 last year. Do you know year. why? Cynics are going to say it was your election year. No, guess what we got approved for this year, Michael? Guess, I'm, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a pin on the way out. Guess what we got approved this year? After all of this came out, this is a story that's from three months ago. Three months ago, I spoke with the Buffalo News about it. I've been very transparent about it. $100,000. So if the legislature was so concerned, if the controller was so concerned, if the county executive was so concerned, if the budget office was so concerned, why did we get approved for that same amount of money? $100,000. So I, I think you say this is a story from three months ago. What's new is we now know this is explicitly illegal. I mean, I shared with you public officer's law, and you said you were a member of the assembly. I mean, mm -hmm. the assembly passed this. The right. law, it, it's, it's public officer's law, section 73B, and it couldn't be clearer. We talked to an attorney in Albany so that we weren't you know, talking to anyone here who may be political. Um, she said the law is very clear. If there's a fee for the advertising, you cannot use taxpayer money and appear in it so, as an elected official. And right. she said ignorance is no excuse for violating the law. Well, I also did look at the law, and I, I, I do think intent is part of that. Uh, based on that, uh, the mens re of what's the intent? If the intent was to do that, then there was no intent because we were clear and we were transparent from the beginning to the end. So. I don't know of another place, a legislative body, where the media is available, uh, that people could come 
and we talked about what we were going to do. You talked about advertising. You didn't talk about using your face and your voice. You just, nobody's questioning really the advertising, right? Advertising the Think of It program seems like a good use of money. Advertising the services in the clerk's office seems like a good use of money. The problem is using your picture and your voice as an elected official when the law says you can't do it. So here's the thing. If I did not know that, the controller did not know that, the county executive did not know that, the budget office did not know that, and people heard the ads. This wasn't like something where they, you know, the ads came out with one week to go. The controller was a very aware that the ads were going on. At any point in time, he could have either walked over here or picked up the phone or one of his assistants. I think it's said, entirely possible he didn't know it was illegal. Correct. But, but is it his job to know it was illegal? Well, you're, he the is, who, you're the ones who did the ads. But he is the uh, taxpayer watchdog. I did not know, and I still do not know, there is still, I would like to get an interpretation on this. Well, there was a 2008 opinion because a sheriff in Monroe County mm -hmm. tried to pay for public service announcements regarding handicapped parking, mm -hmm. and it cost money. And the opinion was, you cannot use taxpayer funds as an elected sheriff with your picture, face, or likeness, or voice. If you look at the budget, I'm not the only county-wide elected official that has an advertising budget. Does anyone else in this county or anywhere else that you know of there was violate a, the law? We don't know if the law was violated. All we know is that we now know what we can or cannot do with advertising money. We will not do that again. Obviously, I will adhere to the law. However, my point is, at any point in time, we want it to save taxpayers money. When you say, why do you not want to do it? We want to make sure that every single veteran puts his DDG-14. You know, I'm the one that gets the calls when someone's going to lose their house and someone's facing foreclosure. And we try to help those people. And we connect them up with people. Uh, and we've helped thousands of people over the years. They want to trust people. There's a lot of scammers out there who say to people, and we know we see those advertising, we'll buy your house. And we're working on, with the district attorney's office, ways where we can stop those scammers. Uh, we do something called property alert, where we're going to alert people. But of course, look at hindsight's 2020. You wish you hadn't run these ads the way you ran them. Correct. Hindsight's 2020. We all know that. It's like saying we shouldn't have played Von Miller in that game. We wouldn't want to have him for the playoffs. We all know that. It's easy to Monday day quarterback. My point being is, if this fell through the cracks. It's a county government problem. One, there's no county policy. So if there was a county policy, it but would there's have, a state law. There is a state law. And we know that there's a state law. But obviously, if the controller was not aware of it, if the county attorney's office was not aware of it, if the uh, county executive not, was not aware of it, I mean, I'm not an attorney. My job is to process transactions, accept paperwork, do the best job, and we do a pretty darn good job of it here in Erie County. I've been elected three times as county clerk. I've been some people watching this may think it sounds like you're blaming other people. Isn't it your job to make sure you're operating within the law? It's everyone's job. It's everyone's job, Michael. It's everyone's job to do and make sure that we are adhering to all the laws. That's why New York State audits us. We're audited by New York State. Uh, all, a lot of different departments get audited. We have self-audits. So, yes. There's a lot of blame to, you know, to, to share. But my point being is, is if the controller had such a problem with this, and this was something that he was concerned about, call me. Come see me. This is not, I'm not, I'm not a, uh, uh, someone, he was my first teacher. This is why I know it's political. At any point in time, he could have come over. And I told him this, man to man, person to person, face to face. Why didn't you come talk to me? Because at any point in time, we would have stopped. But he didn't. He waited till after the election. And then, then only, he filed a letter with the Erie County Legislature first. Made a political uh, splash for other people. Because people perceive me as a threat for other offices. Then called me up on the telephone to say, hey, sorry, I got to tell you something. I heard this during the campaign, and I thought there was a problem with this. And I didn't want to interfere with the campaign. Well, that's not good enough. 
You have a fiduciary duty at any point in time. That's like us witnessing a car accident right now saying, hey, no, we would stop and help someone if they were in a car accident or someone that needed assistance. Lots of people going forward had a little piece of this at, at any point in time. As soon as someone heard it, which he did hear it prior to the election, we would have stopped. If I received a cease and desist letter, or if I would have received an opinion from the county attorney's office, or if he would have asked the county attorney, or any legislator would have said, hey, look it, this is what we're reading in the Buffalo News. What's going on with this? We still were approved $100,000 for advertising. So of course, we are gonna look at this. Well, that's the question about the timing, but the question about using your voice, your likeness and picture. Well, we know that even, now. You we know it now because we, we know it now. It's, 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 it's yeah. data complete. I have two final quick things because I've taken up enough of your time. Um, the, the attorney with whom we spoke, and you know this as you look at the law, it's up to a $5,000 fine for each violation of this pursued civilly by the attorney general's office if the office chooses to do so. Remember, civil is not criminal. Absolutely. Civil but is if, not criminal. If the attorney general's office comes after you with potential civil fines related to this, we're talking millions of dollars. No, we're not talking millions of dollars. What we're talking about is... I think is, we have 1,300 instances in which your ads violated the law. Look at, as a public official, uh, I have within, if it's something done within my duties, I would get representation from the county. Um, I think this is a non-factor. Uh, this is uh, uh, politics at its best. You know, my former uh, council member, uh, colleague, uh, Damone Smith, used to always say politics. It's politics. But it's also the law, no? It's the law. You know, there's just, you know, when we talk about waste of money, waste, fraud, and abuse, there's so many different things. So I'm glad you're doing that story because that's a good thing that you're doing. Absolutely. Just like I don't know what you're doing, you don't know what I'm doing. So that's why you're here today. We're getting an explanation. But I think, look at, you said it earlier, and I think I have an 18-year uh, career as an elected official. I don't hide from anything. I'm open. I'm transparent. You got a hold of me yesterday. It's 1030 today. And I think that is, you know, I, I do it, appreciate that. You never run away from a story. And we tell the truth. From a story. And this is, this is the truth. The truth is, you know, the truth shall set you free. We are going to continue to tell the truth, and this is the truth. The truth is we went through a process. Now, if that process has to change, that's a good thing. Now we now know, right? All of the elected officials know that. If the controller puts forth a policy, we'll know that, and we'll continue to do that. Maybe purchasing uh, will change on how they deal with all advertising dollars. Yeah. Final question. Are you running for county executive? I haven't decided that. I'm the Erie County clerk, so no, I haven't decided that yet. So, you know, all I'm looking to do is to be a good clerk, to be a good elected official, uh, to do the best possible uh, job that I can for the people of Erie County. And I'm very thankful uh, to have that job. It's a high honor uh, to be an elected official. And, you know, once again, I, and I want to, you know, I, I didn't mean to criticize you but I only know what I know and you only know what you know. So we'll continue to do what we'll do and we have immediately stopped all advertising, right? And we will advertise in the future, but we'll double check and make sure that it doesn't violate uh, any type of legislation or any type of law. And we'll continue to do that. So, you know, we can only control what we can control. We can only do what we can do. But this office does not get the credit does not get the respect and the certainty. And there's politics. So of course, you know, I am someone who's, uh, you know, people are asking to challenge us. We face this every day. We face conflict every day in this office from across the street. It's a daily thing. So we just do our best uh, to do what we can do. But I think these are fair, um, you know, questions and I think you know, I'll, I'll answer the questions as best as I can, as openly and honestly and transparently as possible. Thank you. Appreciate it. No, thank you, Michael. Thank you so much.